Hi everybody! Today I want to show you how to use the Linkify function from PyRavid. This is a great feature to create clickable buttons in the output menu, which can select elements, open views, or even find elements in the active views. It's a great way to easily and quickly create interactive reports that can help you inspect your models better and display all the information that you want. I will also mention its limitations and one bonus example in the end, but first of all, let's learn how do we use it. So, first of all, we can go and look for the PyRavid developer documentation. And in here, make sure that you go to the Notion page. In the Notion page, scroll down until we can see effective outputs right here. And then in here, select Create Clickable Element Links. And here is an example, and you can see it's super simple to do. We need to import scripts from PyRavid, then we need to get the output by using script get output, and then we can print this Linkify objects. You can see here is the screenshot, and you have this kind of buttons in the output menu. And the moment you click on them, you're gonna select your elements, you will be able to find them and so on. And I'm gonna cover how to do all of that in this video. We can also have a look at the PyRavid documentation. Make sure you open this read the docs. Then in the left side, I wanna go to the output because this is where Linkify is. I'm gonna select output again. And then I'm just gonna search for Linkify. I can see right here static Linkify and it's gonna create a linkable link for provided element IDs. In here, you will notice that there are two arguments. The first one is obviously element ID. The second one is the title. So you can change how this button actually looks. Maybe you wanna write wall and element ID. Maybe you wanna write how many elements inside and so on. And another important thing is here, you'll notice that element ID can either be a list or element IDs. So it can be either a single or a list of element IDs. And again, there is some example, but I think this one will be more than enough. Let's copy this thing and actually go to script and start testing it. Here's the simplest script you can imagine. I have my title, the regular import and doc and UI doc. Now I'm gonna paste it here and we're gonna break it down. We're gonna take this import and put it on the top. And then this output, we can put it in the variables. That's actually quite fine. Now, here is this Linkify. There are two things we have to do. First of all, normally we create this Linkify element where we take output Linkify and use the element ID. In this case, I don't have anything, but let's just think about it first. Then you're gonna take it and put it in the print statement. And you also have an option to use this kind of format to put it in there if you also wanna include some text. For example, you can write some text in the beginning and then here is the button. Now, let's clear all of this and we're gonna start from the beginning. We're gonna start very simple. I'm gonna have a look how to linkify single elements. In our case, walls. First of all, let's get some walls. I'm gonna write all walls equals filtered element collector of the document. Then we wanna make of class wall and then convert it to elements. Also, in the beginning, I don't wanna have too many elements. So I'm gonna write here doc active view ID. This way, we're gonna get elements only from the active view. So if I'm gonna be in floor plan, I'm gonna get all the walls in the floor, floor plan. Now we're gonna iterate for all of these walls, for wall in all walls, and we can create linkify wall object. As you remember, we take output, linkify, and we need to take our wall ID. And now we can print it and see what happens. So this is very simple. Let's go to Revit and see what's gonna happen. I'm here in just the sample project of Autodesk. I'm just gonna click on this button. The moment I do, it's gonna list me all the walls here and you can see inside their element IDs. I don't like how it looks, so instead of that, maybe let's come back. And I wanna make sure that I provide here some kind of title. In this case, I wanna write wall name and it's gonna get the type name of the wall. Now, let's come back and try it again. I'm gonna click on it. This time you can see I have my type walls right here inside the button. I'm gonna put it on the side maybe. And now have a look. If I'm gonna click on any of them, I'm automatically gonna select it in Revit. You can see it says walls one right here and you can see the same type. But if I click on token bow, you can see I select the token bow and you can also see them selected in the view. But also you will notice there is this regular button and on the side you have this kind of magnifying glass. And if I'm gonna click on it, it will try to find this element in a view and zoom on it. This is a really good way to actually create some kind of list of elements based on some parameters. Or maybe you find elements with your warnings then you can click here to quickly zoom on it to see what kind of elements we're dealing with. You can also click and just select them, but it depends on what you're trying to do. But overall, you can see, I just used a few lines of code and already have a really good helping tool to help me model or find issues or solve some problems. Now, let's go back to the code. This was the first example, Linkify single walls. We can also Linkify multiple elements. 
let's just put here some kind of separator. And let's go have a look at the second example where we're gonna linkify multiple walls. For that, we're gonna copy this line right here to get all the walls in a view again. Now, since we made it here to elements, we need to convert it to element IDs. We could also make it to element IDs, but I prefer to get to elements and then wall IDs is gonna be, and with least comprehension, we're gonna write wall ID for wall in all walls. Now we can create this linkify object. We're gonna write linkify walls equals output linkify. We're gonna provide this wall IDs inside. Also, I wanna provide here a title. I just wanna write walls and how many walls we are putting in here. And with format, we're gonna get the length of this list. Now let's align it a little nicer. And lastly, we're just gonna print this linkify walls. Now let's go to Revit and test it. I'm gonna click in here, click on the button. And you can see the moment I do, I only have one button which says walls 55, because there are 55 walls in this linkify. And when I click on it, you'll notice that I select all of these 55 elements. Also a quick tip, whenever you work with this and you for example select your elements, use the scroll button to actually come back to Revit and keep your selection. This way nothing is cancelled, because if you're going to come back with a left click, you lose all your selection. So let's come back, I'm going to select this one, and now I can come back to Revit, maybe isolate it, maybe delete, maybe do whatever you want, you know. But however, there is limitation when you work with multiple elements in the Linkify. And let me show you that. I'm going to comment out all of this again, put the separator, and I want to show you that there is actually a limit of around 100, 150 elements. It depends probably on element IDs. Again, I'm just going to copy the whole thing we just wrote, but this time I'm going to remove this part. I'm not going to get only from the active view, I'm going to get from the whole model. So now I'm going to get hundreds of different walls. Again, I'm going to make a list of element IDs, then linkify. Let's also add here. Here are all the walls in the project. And with the format, we're going to add this linkify object. So create the linkify, which is going to look like this. This is the button. And here's our just text where we also insert the button. Now let's go back to the Revit, click on it and have a look. Here are all the walls in the project and there are 489 walls. But unfortunately, the moment I'm going to click it, I'm going to get this warning saying URL was too long and discarded. So there is a limit of how much elements we can put inside of these buttons. I don't know if I can go around it and actually change the limit, but it is what it is. And normally it's around 100, 150 elements. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's come back and comment it out. And now the next example I wanna show you is how to linkify views. And it's also very simple and it works a bit differently because you cannot really select your views, but you can open them. I'm just gonna get all my views by using filtered element collector or document of class view plan, for example, and convert it to elements. Now we're gonna iterate for view in all views. Let's create linkify view and we're gonna use output linkify view id and in text we can write view and then the view name i'm gonna write format view name and lastly we're gonna print this linkify view let's go to revit and test it i'm gonna click on Parrot linkify and can see i have a list of all my view plans and now the moment i click on any of them it's just gonna open this view in revit and sometimes it can be really convenient when you need to just have a bunch of views and you want to jump between them really quickly. This way you can just print out a few views that you need and you can just use it to kind of jump between your views. You might have also noticed that when I click here, I did not open any views. And this is because probably it's just a view template. Let's go back to the code and fix it. Because you see in here, I'm going to get all views and view templates. And if I want to get only view templates or only views, I would need to use least comprehension. I want to get view for view in all views and view templates if view is template. This way I'm going to get only view templates, but if I'm going to put a not here, this way I'm going to get only not view templates. Now, if I'm going to run it again, this time I'm going to get less views, but these are going to be the real views and not the view templates. And now I can click through and see different views. All right, let's go back to the same view we had before, close everything else. And now let's comment it out and I actually want to show you a bonus example on how to analyze warnings. Because so far you saw me printing a few Linkify and it didn't look that useful. But this example is going to show you one of the use cases, for example. 
And also to save you some time, I'm just gonna paste here the whole snippet and I'm gonna go step by step and explain what it does. This is the snippet that comes from Learn Raid API course that I have from one of the lessons. And here you can see that we have a function to get our sorted warnings. We're gonna kind of iterate for warnings in the document. Then we're gonna get its description. And we're gonna categorize all warnings based on the description. Then when we have this dictionary, we're gonna iterate and get the description and list of all warnings. And we're gonna prepare a table data. Then for warning in the list of warnings, we would want to get element IDs of all the elements related to the warning. Then here, I'm also gonna have a look with the get work sharing tooltip, who was the last person that changed it. I'm also gonna combine if there are multiple people, because if there are, for example, five elements and one element was modified by one person, four by the other, we wanna know two names. Then we're gonna create the linkify. Here you can see the title is select, and right here we have our warning linkify, same as before, element IDs and the title. In this case, I'm also gonna be using a table, so I need to prepare my rows, table data, and print my table by using the output. But most importantly, here is the result. I'm not gonna go to Revit and click on this button, have a look at what we get. It's gonna get all the warnings from the project, categorize them, and also make the tables for each different category. And now it can be really useful to inspect your project. For example, in here I can see I have highlighted elements adjoined, but not intersect. There are two elements in each of the warning, and now I have this button inside the table. So I can click on it, you can see I have selected something, maybe I can find it. So I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna try to find a better view. And here are these elements, so I can isolate them, and I can see here is some kind of roof, and here is some kind of wall which is not even touching. But they give me these highlighted elements adjoined but do not intersect. So I can unjoin them, and now you can go through this list and actually check your warnings a little bit easier. This is already far better than Revit has by default. Because by default, you can just see that there are some warnings, you can export HTML, but it's not really useful. In here, you can see all your warnings and you can easily select and even find them in a view to solve it. All right, I hope you found it useful and you already have a few cool ideas where you could use this Linkify feature to inspect your models better. Let me know down in the comments if you have any Revit API questions. And who knows, maybe it will also become a video about Revit API. And if you are new to Revit API, I recommend you to get my beginner's guide to Revit API ebook, which is free and it will provide you a roadmap that you can follow with lots of explanations and code examples. And if you are completely new to PyRevit, make sure you check these videos to set up your development environment. I want to wish you happy coding and huge thanks to my supporters. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.